I'm Lucas, and I'm here to talk to you about the perfect easing function. And I should add a disclaimer that it's not necessarily perfect, but like the pretty good easing function doesn't make an enticing title. So this is what I have. And for the motivation for this, I'll show you something that's not really related to it. Um, but I kind of wanted to show it because it's fun. And this is where I originally came across it. Uh, this is a visual illusion where the positive and negative space swap, so the black and the white arrows exchange. Um, and in this case, I wanted the rotation to start and end smoothly. Uh, if I remove the thing that is making them move smoothly, then it will feel a little bit clacky at the transition. So let's see. If, uh, yeah, it feels, it feels like they're, they're clackily going between these two points. So an animation, an easing function is something that will get you smoothly from 0% to 100% of some thing being animated in different ways. And this function is particularly nice for a few reasons. Um, you could choose uh, not to do any easing. Uh, you could be uh, going from time zero equals time equals zero to time equals one and just go all the way to, to 100% linearly and that would look like this. So horizontally represents time and um, that corresponds to going up uh, from zero to 100%. And you could choose something like a cosine based uh, function. But this one's a bit annoying because at the beginning and the end, you are traveling zero velocity, but your acceleration is instant. So if this corresponded to animating a car, you'd be flooring the pedal, and you'd still be accelerate, decelerating, having your foot on the brake completely at the end. Uh, so this is not as uh, natural as I would like. So I wanted something that would have no velocity at the end, also no acceleration. So you like smoothly, smoothly start accelerating, keep going, and then decelerating. Um, and I'm not the first one to have done this. There's a simple solution, which is you throw a calculus at it. Um, you consider all polynomials, and you set your constraints that I've just described, and you solve for them, and you get uh, the function I described before. Uh, but this is not the approach I had in mind. Um, I wanted to go about it more uh, intuitively by starting from the simplest possible functions and building up um, intermediates that are more and more smooth. So the simplest possible functions are 0 and 1. So you could just start where you're starting and never get to the end, just stay there. You could be at the end and never travel. And if you want to uh, get from one to the other, what you can do is uh, transition between them. So here there's a green, an olive, a zero at the bottom, and one at the end. And if I'm time t along, let's say time t equals one third, I'm one third of the way from the green to the blue. And this forms a linear function, um, as you might expect. But then we can recombine this. So t is the linear function. And we could, we could say, what does it mean to start like 0 and end like t? And that looks like this. At time 1 third, we are 1 third of the way to t, which is itself 1 third. So this becomes t squared, 1 third times 1 third at this point, and so on. And this starts with velocity 0. So we're getting somewhere. Uh, we could also do the um, mirror opposite, which is this. Uh, we could ask what it means to combine uh, the linear function with the function that just ends. And it starts like t, kind of, uh, and it ends constant like 1. And then we can ask, OK, we've got this t squared and this uh, inverse of t squared. Uh, can, we, can we blend between these two? And we can. And it looks like this. And this is sometimes called smooth step. Um, it starts like t squared smoothly and transitions between them and ends smoothly like the other one. But the acceleration, just like with a cosine, is not zero at either end yet. Um, so we keep going. Uh, we can make the beginning as smooth as we want by uh, combining zero with whatever smooth thing we have. So if we combine zero with t squared, we just get t cubed, and we get t to the fourth, and t to the fifth, we keep going. And then more and more derivatives uh, would be zero. So the velocity, acceleration, uh, the jolt, as it's sometimes called, and so on. Um, we can also do the opposite and end as smoothly as we want. Uh, but now the beginning and the end are uh, just, they're just basically like, like uh, t. So we can, we can try to do something where we say, OK, we've got one of these smoother approaches. Uh, we want to figure out what happens when we combine them. So we do that, and we actually just get smooth step again. We don't get something new. So I've combined these smoother functions but they're just as smooth as the smoothest thing we had before, which was not smooth enough. So um, what you can do instead is say, OK, we started combining these things. Let's just build up a grid and combine what we have to the left and to the top. This is a bit like a Pascal's triangle thing. And in fact, uh, you will get coefficients that come from Pascal's triangle. 
And down here, you'll get a smoother function that has exactly the property we want. Uh, it is sometimes called smoother step, and it has velocity zero at both ends, acceleration zero at both ends. So mission accomplished, kind of. Um, and this is just from starting and ending with, we want, to, uh, we want to smoothly go between different things. And you can ask, what, is it, what would happen if you combine more and more of these easing functions that start at zero and one? So uh, you can start small. Here's just t from zero and one. Here's uh, the t squared and the inverse t squared. Uh, you can go another step, combine all the existing ones, and what do you know, there's 13 of these. So there's my 13. And um, this grows pretty quickly. Um, and I just have one funny tidbit, uh, which is that, okay, we originally came up with smoother step by combining these two from uh, this grid. Uh, but it turns out what you can actually do is warp time itself. So what we're going to do is use these two, two cubes, and instead of just letting t range from 0 to 1 linearly, we're going to use smooth step itself as the amount that we go between them. And it turns out this also gets you a smoother step, which was a really cool thing to find out. So here, for example, at 0.3, I'm not at 0.3 of the way, but smoother step of 0.3 of the way. So that was my little exploration with easing functions and uh, what I consider the perfect easing function.